Hello and welcome to The Scientific Method. My name is Kylie and in this video you'll learn how to be a detective investigating a science mystery. Science is a study of how the world around you works. It is about asking and answering questions about what you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Science lets us look at patterns in our world and lets you solve problems using many different strategies. Sometimes you have to get really creative, and sometimes you just have to accept that what you see isn't really what you think you see. Science involves the five senses. It involves a little math, a little art, a little reading, and a little writing. In science, you are always investigating a mystery. You might have many questions about your world already. Questions like, why do human beings blink? Why does the weather change? Is it better for our environment to use paper or plastic bags? How does Wi-Fi work? Why does my little brother sneeze every time he is around plants? Why did my apple rot in my lunch bag? I bet you ask tons of what, where, when, why, and how questions. You already have the mind of a scientific detective. To better investigate the questions, it is a good idea to organize your thoughts into a plan. This plan has a name in science. It's called the scientific method. The scientific method is a set of procedures, like a recipe, to help you problem solve and come to a final answer or conclusion to your question. In the early 1600s, Francis Bacon, a lawyer and philosopher, first proposed a structured method known as a scientific method. He was influenced by the scientific work of Nicholas Copernicus and Galileo Galilei. Isaac Newton, a popular scientist known for his study of gravity, did a lot to carry this method into modern science. Scientists today do not all agree on the best way of using the scientific method. In fact, some believe that there are many detailed steps, whereas others use a general outline. I will give you a general overview first. Then we can talk more about examples of using the scientific method to put your specific detective skills to good use. The five main steps of the scientific method are State a question Gather information Form a hypothesis Test your hypothesis And then analyze the results and draw conclusions. Let's look at each step in detail. The first step in the scientific method is starting a question. In this step, you decide what you want to investigate. You won't know what you are looking for if you do not have a question first. What do you want to know? You might have many related questions about bubbles, for example, like, what is a bubble? Why are there many colors in a bubble? Can I change the color of bubbles? Can I make bubbles in different shapes? Can bubbles be different sizes? What supplies do I need to make my own bubbles? Why do bubbles pop? Can bubbles bounce like balls? Is it possible to make a bubble last forever? <laughs> All of these questions have to do with one topic, bubbles. You can investigate each of these questions in one specific question. How are bubbles formed? By narrowing down the question, you are also narrowing down your investigation. The second step in the scientific method is to gather information or data. It is another way of saying research. This is where your detective skills come in. Now that you asked how bubbles are formed, 
you will need to find out all you need to know about bubbles. Some things you might already know, like kneading soap to make bubbles, but some other things you might not know. To find out more or to research, you can do a search on the internet, read books, watch videos, or ask experts. Next, you'll need to take what you learned about bubbles and make a guess about the answer to your main question. This is called making a hypothesis or an educated guess. An educated guess is not a wild guess. You need to use the information you gathered to help you make a prediction about what you think the answer or solution could be or will be. Your prediction might not be the correct answer, but it could help you make a sense based on the scientific evidence you gathered in the research step. An example of a hypothesis for this bubble investigation is that it is not possible to blow bubbles with water, but the more soap we add to the water, the easier it is to blow bubbles. Right now, you are not sure if this hypothesis is the fully correct answer to your main question of how bubbles are formed, but it is a good educated statement. An example of a wild guess or a poorly formed hypothesis would be, Bubbles are formed when a rainbow melts and becomes blobs of color, transparent balls. While this is a super cool, creative, and funny answer, it doesn't make much sense based on what you already investigated in the research stage. Next, you will test your hypothesis. In other words, you will perform an experiment to help you decide if your educated guess was right. This is where the science gets fun. Okay, so when experimenting, you have a few steps to keep in mind. You will need to determine variables, gather the correct equipment and materials, test, record what you observe, and before testing your hypothesis, you need to decide what things can be manipulated or changed. This can be the tricky part but it's also what makes science experiments so fun. For example, if you're going to figure out how bubbles are formed, you can test different kinds of wands. Do a star-shaped wand, would that work? Or different kinds of liquids. Can we make bubbles with apple juice? Or different ways to blow air into a bubble. Can I make better bubbles with a fan? What can you manipulate or change is called variables. Get it? Because they vary. What is important to keep in mind and to make testing accurate is to only change one variable at a time. This way, you can know which variable made the difference in results. Next, decide what you need to perform the scientific tests. For bubbles, you will need soap, water, a tub, store-bought bubble wands, other household materials like utensils, straws, and so on. Just like with a cooking recipe, it's always best to have all the ingredients, or in this case, all of your equipment and materials, before you begin the experiment. If you plan to do science experiments often, there are some standard materials and equipment you could have on hand. You don't necessarily have to buy these. You can borrow them from a friend, a school, or sometimes even from your local library. Common lab materials or equipment include a microscope, a magnifying glass, a scale, a thermometer, a timer, bottles, jars, and jugs, funnels, droppers, tweezers and tongs, and some fancy science equipment like flasks, beakers, and test tubes, and many more. It is also important to have safety gear when doing science, like safety goggles and gloves. A lab coat has a purpose too. It's not just a fashion statement. Lab coats are meant to protect a scientist's clothes from chemicals, dyes, and liquids. Okay, let's get back to the scientific method. 
Once you have gathered your equipment and materials, you can now conduct the experiment or the test. In other words, follow the steps of the experiment. Finally, keep paper and pencil handy so that you can quickly jot down notes about what you did and what you observed. When observing, be sure to use the five senses as much as possible. Be careful not to taste or touch anything dangerous. It is a good idea to check with an adult before starting any investigation. When writing down what you observe, be sure you are writing facts only. Don't include your opinion, even if it's hard to resist sometimes. And don't leave anything out. Once you have completed the experiment and recorded your findings, it's time to analyze the results. This means you read and think about what happened in the experiment. Go back to your original question, in this case, how are bubbles formed? And see if you have come up with an answer. Does your finding agree or disagree with your original guess? Can you support your hypothesis? What can you conclude about how bubbles are formed based on your findings? In other words, what did you learn? In the bubbles experiment, you likely learn that the more soapy liquid you add to the water, the easier it is to blow bubbles. The scientific process does not end here, even if the five steps are complete. There are a couple things to consider. First, the findings of an investigation are not considered scientific unless the experiment can be reproduced. Once you have tested your hypothesis, can your friend follow the steps easily? Does your friend also find that bubbles can only be blown from soapy water? The second thing to know about the scientific process is that a hypothesis is valid or true until it can be proven to be false by finding an example where the hypothesis is not true. When a hypothesis is not true, this does not mean that you or the scientist did a bad job or failed. Not at all. It is through trial and error that scientific knowledge is always improved. It's actually encouraged. Benjamin Franklin experimented and refined his hypothesis many times before he discovered electricity. And there you have it. No one is too young or too old to investigate questions in our world. And you can't just watch a video about science, you have to do science. So get together with family and friends and keep solving all these fun mysteries. And before you know it, you'll have the method down to a science. If you want to learn more about science, be sure to check out our fun online games and quizzes. And remember to always be curious. Hey! hey.